Hey everybody, Jay Allen here. Welcome back to Jay Allen Guitar. On uh, this episode, I'm going to be filing down the fret sprout on this guitar here. This is the Ariga uh, guitar that I got off of Amazon. A uh, really inexpensive guitar, uh, but a very nice guitar, aside from the fact that the fret ends were uh, quite, quite sharp. Uh, they weren't sticking out real bad, but enough that if you drug a sock or something across it, you'd be able to snag it. And so I figured it would be a good opportunity to file those down, show kind of how that's done, and then do a setup on it. So basically what I'm doing is I've removed the low E because I'm going to be work working on this side. And then I'm just going to take some masking tape, painter's tape, whatever you want to use and put it across the fretboard edge just so that the bottom of those frets can still be seen. This way you're kind of protecting the, the edge of the fretboard there, but you can still file it. And uh, we want to go all the way down to the bottom just kind of make adjustments on it I don't know if you can see this here just kind of making adjustments on it so that it's right under those fret ends all the way down Okay. And then I'm using uh, emery board, just the kind you can get at a cosmetic store or the, you know, whatever. Um, just a real fine grit. Uh, you can get some of these specifically for guitars from Stumac, but, you know, these, you know, usually have one of those in your medicine cabinet. And then I've got this other here this is a file set they're called needle files it's just an inexpensive file set it's got some uh, round ones and oval shaped ones and everything and so I, I've got this oval sort of oval shaped and then a round perfectly round one and uh, so I'm going to use those to file these down with and then I just take the file and uh, just kind of file up under those frets until you can feel it grabbing that one I already did these two I already did so you can hear it And you're going to take some of the tape off. I mean, it's you're actually trying to smooth that fret end off past, you know, well, not quite past it, but, you know, so it's even with the, the wood edge of the fretboard. Um, so you're going to get into that tape a little bit. Fortunately, these weren't too bad. I'm really only putting pressure on the upstrokes. So then, let me 
kind of finish this up. Okay, so let's take that tape off. And you can see we didn't really do any damage to the fretboard, so that's good. And then we'll take our emery board and then I hold it, you know, so that I'm filing off the edges. And then that feels pretty good. are nice. And just kind of go over each side of it and then finish it off with that emery board. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. The fact that these are rounded or blade shaped means that very little of it is touching the actual fretboard itself. And then the point and end, you can really kind of get under there and file that without impacting the fretboard itself.
That's better. And you can use that bladed file since it's real tapered and sharp on the end. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's like a it's like a blade. And then you can just use that sort of sharp end to sort of round those corners off without digging into the fretboard itself. might find it easier to take the neck off if it's a guitar that has a removable neck. Oh, that's way better. Way, way better. Okay, and then on the other side, um, Probably just tape the spring, strings together so that you don't have to remove one. And then you do the same thing on, on this side. Tape, you know, tape off that. Tape off the fretboard there. And then repeat.
Okay. And then the same thing. We just take our file and run it up. until it stops resisting so much.
Okay. Pull the tape. Let's see how we did. Looks pretty good. I'll take that emery board again. And go over the Okay. So then I'm going to want to loosen these up a little bit more. take just some steel wool and polish up these ends. And then make sure the any scratches you put in the grain on the fretboard, you just kind of go over it with the uh, steel wool to make that grain, you know, all go the same direction and then a lot of times when you're working with steel wool i mean it's going to leave these the little metal dust shavings so you can tape off your uh your uh pickups or just to keep the uh, magnets from picking up all that dust. Okay, 
So while I got the strings pushed back, I will polish this edge. And then do the whole top too. Okay. So those are nice and smooth and shiny. And then while I've got the strings back, I'll put some oil on it. Another fretboard. And they call this lemon oil, but it's not really lemon oil. It's lemon scented oil. I think it's, uh, oh, it's the same thing used for like a cutting board or something. Uh, I forget what it's, mineral oil or something. But it smells good. And I just use a paper towel to spread that around. Oops. Makes that rosewood really darken up. And this this fretboard seemed pretty dry. some on the edges too. Uh, a lot of time the edge of the fretboard is sealed with you know clear coat or whatever whatever lacquer true oil or whatever the heck they use uh, depends on who built your guitar and uh, so let's see I'm gonna tape this back to this side so it's out of our way. Uh -oh. What happened there? Did it come out? Yeah, it did. Okay. So then I'm gonna. Yeah, this side's fine. I'm gonna do a little bit of steel wool there. I probably should have done it before I oiled the fretboard, but that's all right. Probably do both sides first, and then put your oil on there. Way better, way better. Okay, so now I think what I'll do is do a quick setup on this guitar. So Can make sure that it's intonated correctly and all that good stuff. My bench is a mess. I'm working with steel wool, it's kind of messy. Okay. 
Okay. So we're going to go Okay. So since I don't really want to take the strings off, I'm going to undo the neck from the body and then I can get at the electronics. I just kind of want to see what this guitar looks like on the inside. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. It's a copper. Uh, this guitar continues to surprise me. That's a copper or brass trim claw. That's so weird. And but it, then it's the just the regular sort of what a half size or whatever that is, the thinner trim block. Okay. Neck pocket looks pretty good. Doesn't look like there was any additional sanding or filing. Um, yeah. So then I ended up getting metal shavings all over this anyway. <laughs> Okay, so let's take the tone volume. Oh, that's the uh, for the coil tap. I like to get the plastic out from underneath the nuts on the tone and volume and Okay, let's uh, take this Pick card off and see what's under the hood.
Okay, well, shielded, shielding paint. Uh, typical electronics, uh, ceramic, pip <laughs> ceramic pickups, the dime size pots, the uh, sort of typical cheap five way switch. Uh, there's humbucker, but this is a shielded cavity. They got some of that gray paint in there. It's not coated great, but. But yeah, that's definitely poplar. That's not uh, so. That's it's a nice, uh, nice looking body actually. All right, so yeah, I just wanted to see what that uh, what that looked like under there. If there was anything interesting about it. Put the screws for the, took them out with the drill, but I put them back in by hand because I don't want to strip them out. Okay, put our knobs back on. Okay, and then put the neck, well, put the trim cover back on. Okay, so then put this neck back on. Okay, here we go. Can't see.
action seemed pretty good on it. I don't think I'm going to mess with that. Okay, we'll tune it up. All right, now we get to uh, check the intonation. Holy cow. <laughs> it's pretty uh, it's pretty off. Still a little sharp. Going right down to the bottom of that spring.
Okay, there we go. Okay, there you have it. Um, I'm going to use this in a test uh, between some guitars, like a, uh, a shootout. Uh, so we'll see how it sounds compared to some uh, other guitars. So thanks for tuning in. <laughs>